Alright guys, hope you're well. So today's video is inspired by, well, your comments. And it is about methanol and home brewing and a little bit about distillation because, well, they're all kind of interlinked. So, um, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So, methanol is a poison. Um, it damages your optic nerve and it can kill you in high doses. The quantity that it would take to kill a person varies because, well, everyone weighs different. So, most of the time, um, it's kind of been villainized, um, especially from Prohibition times. In Prohibition times, unscrupulous people would cut alcohol with all sorts of chemicals, usually antifreeze, um, you know, to make more money. But the downside is, it would kill you. Uh, even some of the people that didn't cut the alcohol would run their distillery through a car radiator and the car radiators at the time were made of lead, so um, you get lead poisoning. Either way, it's a pretty bad time for whoever's drinking the alcohol. But um, if you don't do any of those things, methanol really isn't going to be a problem. So ways to reduce methanol content in your alcohol. Now I've said that it's not a problem, and it's true, it's not, but I don't know about you, if I don't have to have a hangover? I'm not going to. Um, I'm always going to take the choice of less hangover. Now alcohol itself will give you a hangover. Um, a lot of people say it's the methanol. Alcohol does it as well. Some people are more susceptible than others, but again, more sciencey stuff. So the easiest way to reduce the methanol content, to reduce the hangover the next day, is to not ferment to the yeast's maximum alcohol tolerance. Say it's 14% uh, yeast, as I generally use, I drop it down to 11. That last sort of 3% is when you're going to produce the most off flavors and potentially methanol. That's because the yeast is the most unhappy. And we like happy yeast. It's still going to produce it at the lower, the lower end of the spectrum, but it's less. It's a lot less. Um, it's not a linear line. It's more of a little bit, little bit, little bit and then up. That's how it works. Um, heat as well. You can ferment your brews cold and it won't produce off flavors. It doesn't really stress the yeast. I don't know why. You would think it would, but it doesn't. It just slows down the yeast. That's all I found it to do. But on the other hand, heating, the, the hotter you get your yeast, the more of flavors and methanol it will produce. You are stressing that yeast. It is producing it really, really fast. It's on the go all the time. I mean, the prime example, go for a 20 minute run. See how you feel at the end of the day. It feels stress. Your body builds up lactic acid and all the rest of it. So it just, it makes sense in that respect. Um, don't use bread yeast. Just, just don't bother. If, if, you, uh, if you're worried about methanol or you get really bad hangovers, never use bread yeast. It's, it's just not a good thing. Um, Killed you is just sugar and bread yeast. It gives you the worst hangover known to man um, for, for an alcoholic brew. Still nowhere near enough to kill you, but you, you wish you had been. That is all I gotta say about that. So since this is about methanol, it would be wrong of me not to do a little bit about distilling and methanol in distilling. So, I've got a good analogy for you. So I do freeze refraction, and I used four liters and refract that down into a 40-ish percent spirit. I also have an air still that I may or may not use for making things as well. It also has a boiler size of four liters. For a boiler size that small, you don't have to take off any methanol. Uh, you don't have to take off heads. You don't have to. You can if you want. You don't have to. This is because you can quite easily drink four liters of booze without it causing any problems. Um, the methanol content from four liters is not enough to kill you. Even if you concentrate it into a, dis into a distillate, it's still nowhere near enough to bother you. Um, methanol only becomes a problem when you're distilling amounts or when you're blending large amounts together um, but even then there are exceptions to that rule as well uh, 1800s Austria Swiss border they produced a schnapps now uh, for those people that don't know 
This particular schnapps is served in a tiny little glass. You, if you've watched a lot of old school British TV, they normally have the old cruddy films on. Why? I don't know. Anyway, they have these little, tiny little glasses like that big. Really small. But the alcohol in there is a schnapps. It is a fruit schnapps. And uh, they don't remove any of the methanol because right at the start also has all of the flavor. So instead of them removing most of the flavor and whatever, they'll just drink less of it. Weird, right? So it's all to do with quantity and how much you're drinking. Uh, there is a whiskey that I love. I really love this whiskey because um, of its flavor. It's called Glen Murray. Really tasty whiskey. Uh, I do like it a lot. But you can only really drink one, possibly two. Um, by the time I get to a third, which I didn't know at the time, I actually got a hangover. I was still sober, but I had a hangover while drinking it. Uh, that's because they are quite heavy on the heads. Because it's not designed to get drunk on, it's designed to be a tasty, lovely little drink. You're not supposed to drink lots of it. Unlike modern vodkas and all the rest of it today, which have the heads removed, so basically you can drink as much as you like and uh, feel pretty rough the next day. It's a bit weird. So there are things that you can do with the methanol. Um, I'm not saying to not remove it. I'm just saying there are instances where quantity and quality, you know, it's, it's all out there. But anyway, that's uh, it's up for you to decide and for you guys to argue. So I hope you enjoyed this video, found it slightly insightful and slightly helpful. Um, there we go. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Karen Humbrick. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below. And of course, the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.